Hello, dear friends. So good to be with you and uh, spend this time together again, these few minutes where we get to look into God's Word, think about it a little bit, hear a great story of a hymn of the faith, and then listen to the music that inspires us and stirs our souls and uh, encourages us and challenges us in our walk with God to live faithfully with Him. We're excited to be in this series about Fruit of the Spirit and what better way to start than with the fruit of love, can we say it that way? The call to love is throughout Scripture. God is love. We are called to lay down our lives for others for the sake of love. We're called to serve one another in love. Love, by its very nature, calls us to think about the other, to put the other before ourselves. In the day in which we find ourselves where our rights are being uh, called for in, in many circles, uh, this is a, an interesting conversation to bring the, the topic of love into the topic of freedom. The freedom to love is the greatest freedom that we have. We're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and then Colossians 3, 12 to 14, powerful sections of Scripture in the New Testament about love, and they speak for themselves. So let us turn to them now. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if anyone, if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Amen. Our series theme is the fruit of the Spirit. The theme of this hymn of the week is, The Fruit of the Spirit is Love. The hymn of the week, Though I May Speak with Bravest Fire, was written by Hal H. Hobson, a contemporary composer born in 1933. The lyrics are set to a traditional tune, an English melody, with the author unknown. Due to the richness and magnitude of God's love, rather than 
define it in a few words. God chose to reveal it in person. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Love is a word used to describe who God is. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. 1 John 4, 16. Love is also a word used to describe God's generosity. God so loved the world that he gave. Grace is a self-giving word. It is the outflow of God's love toward us. It is neither earned nor merited. Grace can only be received as a free gift. The word love describes both our greatest need as well as our greatest shortfall. We all have an inherent need to be loved. Yet we are deficient when it comes to loving God and one another. We are prone to loving ourselves, but without loving God and our neighbors. Love presents our greatest challenge, that of loving God with all our being and loving our neighbor as ourselves. If we fail to love God and our neighbor, our words become hollow sounds and our deeds of little consequence. The message of God's love is at the heart of the gospel. Love adds credibility to our message. People must know that they are loved by God and by those Jesus sent into the world to proclaim this message. Love is also a word used to describe our greatest potential, which is the fruit of the Spirit, which is Christ alive in us and his grace flowing through us. This requires a kind of displacement within us, which Paul describes a personal crucifixion. The false sinning and self-serving self must die in order to yield, yield space for Christ to live in us. The life I live in the body, Paul says, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Finally, love is the first fruit of the Spirit. Not only the first in a list of virtues, but the primary virtue, which Colossians 3 verse 14 instructs us, and over all of these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect harmony. When the Bible speaks of the fruit of the Spirit, it is not fruit like apples and oranges, which exist independent of each other, but rather that of the grapevine, which produces fruit in bunches or clusters. The fruit of the Spirit is a cluster of nine fruits, with love being the primary fruit that gives meaning to the entire cluster. The fruit is the work of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is Christ living through us. Our hymn of the week, Though I May Speak with Bravest Fire by Hal H. Hobson, is based on 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3. If I speak in the tongues of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all that I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames as a martyr, but have not love, 
I gain nothing. The hymn is a more recent hymn, and its author still resides in Dallas, Texas, where he serves as a composer and church musician. Though the lyrics are relatively recent, they were set to the music of a traditional English melody. The hymn ends with a prayer. Come, spirit, come. Our hearts control. Our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are set free. Listen to the music as sung by Ray Harris, accompanied by himself on the guitar and Ruth Thiessen at the piano. Though I speak with bravest fire by Hal H. Hobson, our hymn of the week. Spirit come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed, by this we worship and are free. Come spirit, come, come spirit, come. Our hearts control, our hearts control, our spirit. 